Whoa. Nice shot. Tease comes over the top with a right hand. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Oh. If I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PG and GM. Praise God to get buddy back for the YouTube video. Bang your man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So we have a little bit of news today, man, from the Virgil Ortiz camp. Well, Virgil Ortiz specifically, you know, uh, he sent out a tweet. Listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. We're talking about practice. Yeah, it's a pretty slow news day in the boxing world. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Unless you want to talk about rumors, which we're not really into too much on this on this channel, you know, I don't really care for rumors like that. But uh, Virgil Ortiz has sent out a tweet listing his hit list. You know what I'm saying? It's a pretty good list, man. Pretty interesting list as well, man. Is is he he called out um, Terrence Crawford, what? Errol Spence, and Sebastian Fedora? And I liked how he prefaced it too. He said, man, he said, you know, this is my top three fighters that I want to fight. You know what I'm saying? And he and he says that he just thinks these guys are the best. He's no disrespect. You know, he just wants to test his skills. And you know, some people will get offended. By it, but I think that's just the nature of sensitive people. Like a little white pussy. Well, I don't understand it. Like, if anything, there's you know, there's nothing disrespectful about calling out another fighter. Um, of course, it depends on how you do it, but but just the thought and the notion of you calling out a fighter, it's it's usually, you know, it's actually the contrary, right? It's a it's a gesture of respect, saying, "Hey, man, I recognize you. I see what you're doing. I would like to try to challenge you and see how I." Uh, uh, um, how I stand up to the best, you know, how, how do I measure amongst the best? So I think it's a compliment how we, how we, uh, call them out. And I think it's a compliment to list somebody that you're saying, you know, the, Hey, if I'm calling you out, most likely I'm acknowledging that you're above me and I'm trying to get to the position that you're at. Not necessarily trying to knock you off per se, but in boxing, that's the nature of the sport, right? You got to go through somebody a lot of times. So I think, um, I think this is a good list. I thought it was done in a respectful fashion. I'm not mad at it. You know, now if you consider the things, you know, let's consider Virgil Ortiz. Uh, he had a major step up in a, in a caliber of opposition, right? In fighting Serhi Boachuk. It was controversial. A lot of people said he lost. I thought it was a good fight, man. It could have went either way to me. Now I will say that um, Serhi Boachuk and, and his supporters, they have a good point where they say that he was a champion and, um, you know, he did drop Virgil Ortiz twice. But Virgil Ortiz did recover and he won a lot of rounds. I personally thought Virgil Ortiz won some won more rounds than Serhi Boachuk, but but you have to uh, count the, the two rounds in which they, he dropped he dropped him, you know, so those are 10-8 rounds at least. And so... Um, I thought it was a good fight. Could have went either way. I would have been more satisfied with a draw. But the fact that I thought it could have been a draw uh, uh, is a testament. And, and, and even further... Uh, even bigger indicator that it could have went either way. So I'm not mad at Virgil Ortiz uh, winning the fight, but it was a close fight. And I think that some people thought I, I, that, that he was going to blow Serhi Boachuk out the water. I think those are the people that are really unfamiliar with Serhi Boachuk because he's a good fighter, man. He only had one uh, 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 hiccup in his career where he got stopped to Brandon Adams, but he was winning comfortably on all three of the judges' scorecard at the time of the stoppage. So you can really look at this. He, he just got caught, you know, but it happens in boxing sometimes. Um, so I think that a lot of people were weren't as impressed with Virgil Ortiz's performance that were unfamiliar with Serhi Boachuk, but I, I, I'm familiar with him, but I thought that was a great, uh, I thought it was a good fight. I expected to be fight of the year. Why did I think it was going to be a fight of the year candidate? Because I thought it was going to be a great fight, you know, so uh, the fact that it was a great fight, the fact that he did have to overcome adversity, uh, I, I, I was impressed, man. It was a major step of competition. Now, let's get back to, after I gave that little breakdown, let's get back to uh, 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 matters at hand, right, which is his his call out of these other three fighters. Let's see how he would fare. Let's start off at the bottom of the list. He has Sebastian Fedor. I'm going to be honest, man. I think he beats Sebastian Fedor. I think that's a good fight. And when he says he wants to fight the best, and this is no disrespect for for, for me to Sebastian Fedor, but let's face it, if you're familiar with the 154 pound division, um, we don't really consider Sebastian Fedor to be the best. But however, from the standpoint of him having two belts currently in his in in, in his uh, possession, the WBC and WBO, then you know he could be considered he could he could be considered the best. But you know it was kind of circumstantial, right? And I don't want to disrespect him because he took advantage of the position that he was in and the situation that he was in with, with Tim Zhu. But Tim Zhu did sustain a pretty pretty nasty cut that that any person with the pulse knew that that severely handicapped him from his vision being impaired and also the excessive blood loss that he had, which would drain your energy, you know? But like I said, with that being said, Sebastian Fedora still won and, you know, he still has two belts. But for, with that being said, I personally believe that the top three in the division are uh, Terrence Crawford, uh, uh, Tim Zhu, 
And if you want to, I mean, we're not going to count Jermel Charlo because of, due to his inactivity. But if uh, so, I would say not excluding Jermel Charlo. I, me personally, I would probably say, um, um, man, I'll probably say Israel Madrimal. Bullshit! 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 bullshit. Still, because he lost a close fight to Terrence Crawford, but I think that was, I would say Tim Zhu, Terrence Crawford, and Israel Madrimov in no particular order, but Sebastian Fedora is a champ, and the reason why I say that is not knocking Sebastian Fedora, but, but, but Brian Mendoza, prior to Sebastian Fedora beating Tim Zhu, he did get knocked out by Brian Mendoza, you know, Brian Mendoza knocked out Sebastian Fedora, and um, Serhi Boachu, who Virgil Ortiz just beat, probably gave Brian Mendoza his, his worst beating to date, you know, had him all lumped up and stuff, but Brian Mendoza is a tough fighter, never been stopped, um, so with that being said, I think Virgil Ortiz, Sebastian Fedora is a Good, is a good uh, fight, um, but I have Virgil Ortiz winning that one. Now, Errol Spence, I think he could be considered for being in the top of the division, but that heavily depends on how he bounces back, you know, because last time we saw him was over a year ago now, and he had a devastating loss. Uh, um, he got brutalized by Terrence Crawford, number one pound for pound king, in my opinion. You know, top three, either Crawford, Inouye, or Usyk, or uh, whatever order you have, have him in is interchangeable, but I have Terrence Crawford, number one, Usyk, two, now you Inouye, three. Um, so I think, I think Errol Spence, it heavily depends on how he bounces back from that loss. Um, you know, that was a year ago because he is moving up to another division, but it was well documented that he was struggling making the weight at 147. So we, I I anticipate him to uh, bounce back well. I'm not going to say he's, he's going to be back to his prime self. Uh, I don't think he'll ever be be uh, close to his prime self again due to his car accidents and stuff. But I do think he's good enough to be Fundora. And I do think he's good enough to be considered as a major competitor at 154. So with that being said, Virgil Ortiz versus Errol Spence. I would have to lean towards Virgil Ortiz right now, but if Errol Spence could even be even a shell of himself, man, I think that's a great fight, and and I could see how people would think Errol Spence would win. But right now, today, just for for the uncertainty standpoint alone, uh, from an uncertainty spe- perspective, I would go with Virgil Ortiz to win that fight. Um, so right now, I have him winning two of the three fights. Now, last but not least, Terence Crawford. I think I'm not going to go too, in too much detail, but just off the surface, the way that Virgil Ortiz fights, the way that he keeps his head on the center line, the way that he um, I'm not gonna say he's a plotter. He's not a plotter, but he but his movements are pretty limited, and he comes and he moves. His mobility is isn't. He's not the most agile either, you know, in the ring, and um, you know he's not exactly fleet of foot either. So I would say that he's stationary enough to where Bud is is will not only see his see his attacks coming and and, and anticipate his movements, but probably will also be able to pre- to predict his movements as well. So I don't think that he. he that that fight bodes well for him, even though I would love to see it. Uh, 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 um, uh, Big Turkey out of the street would like to see it. And um, Oscar said he would like to see it. But then again, he also said he wanted to see Zapay and Shakur as well. And you know how what happened with there, right? He reneged on that one. So, um, but let's say hypothetically, if that fight was to happen, I would lean towards Terrence Crawford uh, by stoppage. I'd say by eight eight or nine round stoppage, man. I think he breaks him down. Um, I think he ha- does it pretty uh, he does it pretty easily as well. Y'all let me, with that being said, that's my that, that's my prediction. You know, I, I have Virgil Ortiz going two and one, beating Fandora, beating Spence in a good fight, and then losing to Terrence Crawford. Y'all let me know what y'all think about in the con- in, 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 in the comments do y'all think that he loses all of them do you think he wins all of them let me know which one you think he wins or loses do you think he's out of line for even calling people out i think that's a that's an asinine uh um a notion or 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 position they even think that you shouldn't be calling out people you should be calling out people and i think that's a testament to the people who's who you're calling out greatness now you could do it in a disrespectful manner you can also do it in a respectful manner i think he did it very respectfully and i I rock with virgil ortiz and i I can't wait to see him back in the ring man y'all let me know who you think he beats who you think he loses to and yeah don't forget to like the video but most importantly remember with God, we can do anything. Without God, we are nothing. Y'all be easy. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds, they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold, we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.